What's happening Hardscapers? Today I want to talk about this and why it should be installed in every one of your bases when you're preparing a paver project. Let's get into this. Now this is GeoGrid and this is specifically biaxial GeoGrid and what it does is it helps to stabilize the aggregate in your base. It has holes in it that are called apertures and when it gets rolled out in your base system and the gravel, the aggregates in that base material strikes through the openings of these apertures. It helps to interlock those aggregates which also helps to stabilize that base material that is placed on top of the geogrid. Now there's a few different types of geogrid. There's uniaxial, biaxial, triaxial, but when it comes to using geogrid in a paver base application, what you're looking at is either biaxial or triaxial geogrid. Uniaxial is used in a retaining wall scenario. In this, it's sandwiched in between the layers of a retaining wall and stretched back usually at least three feet into your drainage area and into a reinforced soil area. And uniaxial axial geogrid has strength in one direction and that's why it's used in a retaining wall scenario to help stabilize the material that's placed on top of it and with that stabilized material it gets less pressure put on the retaining wall. However with this geogrid installation of uniaxial there's no overlap between pieces of the geogrid and that differs when you get into actually installing a paver base application where you're going to be using geogrid and in this case you are going to overlap it 12 inches and you're only going to use biaxial or triaxial. Biaxial is characterized by square apertures with strength in two directions, hence the term biaxial. And then triaxial is a little bit more heavy duty and it's got strength in three different directions and it's characterized by triangular apertures as opposed to square. Now the reason why we use GeoGrid in every single one of our paver base installations is because it's cheap insurance. It's an incredibly inexpensive product product that helps to stabilize our base material and in doing so we're providing a better product to our clients in the long term. And that's the goal with any one of our paver projects that we're trying to install here. We want to provide the best end product possible for our clients and that includes the longevity of the project. It's not just about the design, the functionality of the space that you're constructing for your client but also the longevity and the lack of maintenance that has to go into that project in the long term especially when you're using pavers. So for the minimal additional cost of GeoGrid and the added stability that it provides in every one of our base installations Adding GeoGrid is a no-brainer. And it also helps to differentiate us as a contractor in our space if we can bring along a small piece of GeoGrid when we're doing a consult and we can explain to our client how and why we use GeoGrid in every application that we're installing along with a proper geotextile as well and why we use the specific base preparation method that we're going to use for that specific project, we can really help to differentiate ourselves from other contractors that may be looking at that same type of work. And that's why with every consultation, I bring a small square of GeoGrid, I bring a small square of GeoTextile, and I bring a small square of synthetic base just in case. I want my clients to touch it, feel it, and see what we are going to be doing for them, for their project, and how we're gonna ensure that we're building the best possible project for them. On our How to Hardscape podcast, a few years ago, we had Paul from Tensar on talking about triaxial geogrid, the benefits and when and where you should use it to be installed on a paver base project. And from that, I took away that we install it at the bottom of the paver project where we typically have a six to eight inch installation of a base material on top of it. It's especially important for soft soils. And the reason why we place it at the bottom of our excavation is so that it stabilizes the material that we place on top of it. Now with a driveway application you can do two layers do a layer of biaxial or triaxial six inches of base material and then another layer of biaxial triaxial and then another six inches before you get into your bedding layer and then the pavers on top of that but it was highly recommended to have six inches of base material on top of it with a minimum of four inches and then as I stated a 12 inch overlap on top of that from piece to piece it's not like a retaining wall uniaxial geogrid installation we do want that overlap when it comes 
comes to biaxial or triaxial for a paver base. Now you'll also know from other videos on our channel that we also like to use geotextile, and that's more so for separation between the subsoil and that gravel base. And this is especially even more important for an open graded base because we never want the mixture of that subsoil to get into our base material with the traffic that gets put on top of our paver application. So that separation is incredibly important. And then when you get into a woven versus non-woven geotextile, that woven adds strength and stability to our insulation where that non-woven adds a little bit more drainage to our insulation. However, if geograde is gonna be at the very bottom of our excavation, we'll opt for a non-woven because it has a little bit more give to it so we can get a little bit better strike through of that aggregate through the geogrid to be able to interlock them. If we're gonna go woven based on our subsoil or the application, then we'll opt for the woven geotextile, four inches of aggregate, and then a layer of geogrid, and then another four inches of aggregate before we get to our bedding layer for our base. And that's just how we install geogrid into our paver base projects. When it does come to something like a synthetic base using paver base panels, we don't need geogrid because those paver base panels provide the added stability to that project. So this is more so for our traditional base preparation methods and then our open graded base preparation methods. We do have a video on our channel of us testing GeoGrid in a specific application and showing you the strength and stability that it provides through that experiment. It did not go exactly as I had planned, but if you're interested in that, it should be popping up near the end of this video. And if you had questions about any other base preparation method that I talked about throughout this video, that includes open graded base, synthetic base and a traditional base. I'll leave links in the description below to all of those so that you can learn more about each of those base preparation methods. Along with a geotextile, non-woven versus woven and the applications for both of those. Lots of information coming from this video, but if you want to learn more about hardscaping, if you're thinking about starting your own hardscaping business or your own project, we do have a members only platform with courses for installing pavers, installing retaining walls, along with many more courses on knowing your numbers, budgeting and estimating. And with that is a subscription to our How to Hardscape headquarters software, which will allow you to budget estimate and streamline processes in your business. So for hardscape business owners, if you, that interests you, you can check out that link is in the description below for that as well. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason, it really helps us with this channel. And I thank you so much for doing that. Comment below any questions that you may have geogrid related or suggestions and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.